But if there is a real problem and there is complete disobedience and complete refusal from the wife, then how should I react? Who amongst the married can give me an answer? So if there is complete refusal and complete disobedience from her, the first step is to advise her, remind her, admonish her. And how does he admonish her? <laughs> so is admonishing her, threatening her with taking all the children and taking the passports and taking all her papers such that she's going to remain in the country like a refugee? Is this admonishing her? No, this is threatening. No, rather, when you give a wa'ad, a reminder, an admonishment, how is it? He says, buy for her a gift. Now, you buy a gift and you send a message with a big red heart, love heart, and then you write sweet words to her and you say, oh, my precious wife, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa advised me to be good to you and advised you to be good to me, so fulfill your rights. Because you want from her to return back to you and to be good to you and live with you in, in an appropriate manner. You don't want her to disobey you even further. So, so admonishing and correcting and rectifying the marriage, it's important. So if she says that, okay, I repent to Allah, then what do you say to her? Ah. If she is sorrowful and she says, okay, I repent and I'm sorry, then how should you behave? Do you say to her, no? It's not that easy. I need to teach you the lesson. Don't you remember yesterday you did this and this and this? No, not like this. It's like Allah subhanahu wa mentioned in the Quran that if they return to your obedience, then the Shaykh said that don't keep that file opened. Close that file because each time if she says sorry and she returns back and you say, but I need to teach that lesson. And do you remember what you did the other day? Then this is going to be a continuation of those problems. But if she does not react in a manner which is appropriate and she remains completely disobedient and refusing, then you throw the present to her. So you, you throw the, she throws it back to you and she says to you, you've got no style and no taste in buying gifts. Anyway, so he replies and he says, look, my taste is good because I chose you. Anyway, if she doesn't return and it's complete refusal and complete disobedience, so how should we behave? We say that the next step after trying to admonish her is to be distanced from her. And how does he be distanced from her? And that is for now. three days, he refuses to speak to her. And then after three days, he greets her. And also in terms of sleeping, he also, and he stays away from her. And this means that he can sleep in the same bed, but gives her his back. So he doesn't need to go and sleep on the couch in a different room. Now, if she's sorrowful and regretful and she repents, again, the file is closed. But if she carries on with her disobedience and a complete refusal, some people think that Islam, it calls to beating the women and leaving marks on them. And Islam is free from this. The Prophet ﷺ, he never hit a slave or a servant, never mind a woman. It's not possible. It's not possible that the religion of Islam contains an encouragement to beat or hurt women and leave marks upon them. And here is in front of you the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ and the lives of the Sahaba. And then after this stage, he does not hit a woman and leave marks on her. So after this, what does the person do? Okay, the next step of reconciling a problem between the husband and the wife, what is it? Is that a, a male from her family and a man also from his family, both of them are chosen. And also these two people who are going to come forward and try to reconcile between them, they intention should, should be to find out the root of the problem and try to solve the problem and bring them together. So you don't choose a person who's not very intelligent and he's going to cause further problems and he wants to her to be divorced. And yeah. also a person who is intelligent enough that he understands the situation. So for example, if his wife does not pray, he says, no, she has to pray. Or if the man, he's drinking alcohol or smoking or taking intoxicants, then he says, no, this is valid enough for a divorce. Yeah. But if her complaint is that my, hus my husband hasn't bought me for me a particular garment, then these intelligent people... They try to solve the issue. They say, okay, I'll buy you a piece of garment and just keep together, stay together, solve your problem. And when the issues are resolved, then the file is closed. After this, what do we do? And if 
after all of these steps that a person takes and there are still problems and there's refusal and there's disobedience and the rights are not being fulfilled, then the fifth and final step is divorce. And how does he divorce? Is it that a person says to his wife that I divorce you a million, million times? Is it correct? Firstly, he's only allowed to say the divorce in a, in a state of her purity in which they have, had not, uh, they have not had relations. And he is not permitted to exile her or exit her from the house. And he, and he is still responsible for maintaining her. And also, the husband, he should also remain in the house as well. So he maintains her and does, he does not throw her out of the house. And neither does he himself also abandon the house. And shaitan, and there are many different shayateen, the whole focus of the shaitan and the one who is most beloved to the shaitan is that person who tries to separate between husband and wife, or separate between people. Yeah.